What's up, best friends? Hybrid work is here to stay, and so are the threats. What do I mean by that? Well, you have a private cloud, you're doing stuff in AWS, Azure, and heck, maybe even GCP. That just means you have applications and data that lives over there. So let's call them applications one, two, and, and three. And you have data that lives here. In addition to that, you're gonna have data in your SaaS-based applications as well. And when we say SaaS, it could be M365, maybe some Salesforce.com and ServiceNow, all great partners of Zscaler. And there's one thing that's for certain, your data going out to the internet, you don't want that to happen. So I'm sure you have employees that are on AOL, just kidding. Maybe they're using some generative AI websites or worse yet, they're going out to terrifying websites like BrianDeach.com, riddled with malware and phishing links and whatnot. That's not everything. You still have to contend with the data center. In the data center, you have applications over here and they might be the same or slightly different. And your users are everywhere because they're hybrid. So they're here in the office and you have some type of connectivity here. It might be MPLS or SD-WAN, but this technology is predicated on implicit trust. It's gross and yucky. Then of course we have our COVID superstars, the, the work from anywhere people, WFA as I like to call it, and you need to have security that's gonna be always on. And then last but not least, you have to think of like unmanaged devices coming in and talking to stuff. So we'll just call it BYOD, bring your own device. So we look at this, I think there's about five different attack vectors. You have phishing protection, and make sure that these users are protected where they're here, at home, Starbucks, abroad, Gulu, Africa, it doesn't really matter. Unmanaged devices, if they're accessing stuff that is part of your company, you want your data to stay where it belongs at, over here, over here, and over here, not on grandma's computer. Number three, when users are on the network, it breeds lateral movement. We want to be able to come over here and separate that because if it's reachable, it's breachable. You have users that are on there that can bounce around and do all kinds of nefarious things. Fourth, when we're looking at SaaS, your data needs to stay here. We don't want it to leak out into the endpoint devices that are not sanctioned or at worse yet into like personal email and things like that on the open internet. And last but not least, we have the Edward Snowdens, right? That person that's doing some lateral movement is also a risky user. So how do we figure this out in the Zscore world? Well, you guessed it, right? We're gonna introduce the Zscare Zero Trust Exchange. We'll kind of keep it simple with all the three letter acronyms, but just know zero trust defenses that neutralize all these threats. So when we think about phishing, what do we have? We have Zscare Client Connector, little lightweight agent that goes on here. Sole goal in life is make sure that it's always on, whether they're off the network or on the network. If it's always on, it means we're protecting everything. Get complete visibility into internet and all SaaS-based applications. And of course, in zero trust uh, world, we're doing the whole Zscaler private access. We have the little lightweight VM that sits over here at the data center. It doesn't allow inbound access and it reaches outbound over here. And that same architecture is gonna follow us over here in the private cloud, because why? Because backhauling traffic to a data center and going out and express router direct connect is it's anti-cloud at best. So these are some of the fundamentals. So if we have a consistent user policy that follows this user regardless of the location, it doesn't really matter where they're at in the world. If they click a link, it's going out to BrianDeach.com, it's trying to compromise them in one way or another, you're gonna have that phishing protection built in. Two, from a BYOD perspective, you don't need an agent. We don't even give them a VPN. Heck, yeah, you could roll out uh, the Zscare Client Connector anywhere, or you can come over here just via a portal page on any browser in the world. So we'll just call it portal.b.com. And really what that is, it's a C name that points right here. And what's really neat about that is when this user authenticates those SaaS-based applications, maybe M365, maybe uh, salesforce.com, or heck, maybe even application one is going to be delivered to this browser, wrapped in browser isolation. So their ability to interact with the application is unparalleled. They can do it, but their ability to copy and paste, upload and download is being completely retracted. 
They have no ability to do it. So they get the, all the benefits and be able to leverage these applications here, here, and here, but you have the peace of mind knowing that your data is gonna stay exactly where it belongs, which is here, here, and here. Number three, when we think about this user in the hybrid mode, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they're at home, Tuesday, Thursday, they're in the office, the last thing you wanna do is really put them on the network. And what do I mean by that? We wanna make sure that this traffic is always going through here, and one of the huge benefits is we can actually retire MPLS and SD-WAN. Reduce that lateral movement. They can't go from here to over here without going through the Zero Trust Exchange. And everything that we do there is predicated on the identity of the user. We're looking at the username, departments, locations, groups, the list kind of goes on and on. From a SaaS data leakage, you still have the ability to introduce all your SaaS-based applications. They can access this data Heck, they can even have that data pulled down onto this endpoint or this endpoint here. But if that user tries to take that data, send it over here through the Zero Trust Exchange, going out to personal email, chat GPT, will be like the soup Nazi and be like, hey, no soup for you, you can't do that. And last but not least, that risky insider. When they're trying to bounce around the network, like a field mouse is leaving a path of destruction, the reality is they're never really on the network anymore. Whether they're here, here, or over here, they're always, always off the network. So that user can talk to an application, whether they're at home, Starbucks, abroad, Gulu, Africa, and that traffic is encapsulated, sends it over here. We look at the identity of the user and produce that verdict, allow, deny, steer, isolate, warn, deceive, coach. But in the interest of connectivity, they can talk to application one. But if this is the next Edward Snowden, and they're like, hey, if application one exists, maybe application two exists as well, well, guess what? You could block them, but better yet, we could deceive them. And what that means is instead of just blocking that user, because I don't block the user here, or right here, or right here, I always do it in the zero trust exchange. I can throw them into my little decoy, get hands and eyes on it, and one of the coolest things about our decoy technology is that when a user lands on there, we know definitively who you are. So if this user is like that next Edward Snowden, they try to replay credentials here, go out to BrianDeach.com, pull down a piece of malware and move it east or west. Guess what? There is no east or west because you're not on the network. With the power of the Zero Trust Exchange, you can secure your hybrid workforce with Zscaler. That's my time. Do me a favor, like, share, comment. Leave me an internet high five. I don't know. Thank you for watching.